Well, it's been about uh, a week, uh, seven days or so, uh, well, a little longer maybe, since I, uh, I um, kind of took a hands-off approach. Uh, I wanted them to, to, to get used to my presence and get used to me feeding them. So when I, whenever I was feeding them, I was standing close to them. Um, and then I've been kind of watching them. They've been more relaxed. They're not uh, running to the back of the corral when I come up like they were before. Um, they're calming down quite a bit. In just a week, I've seen a big difference. And part of what I see is their body posture. I mean, um, a donkey will, he's still, they're still a little jumpy when I move, as you can see, but part of his, you know, their tail's normally tucked. They got the rear end underneath them. They're expecting me to, um, know, they're expecting something to happen at any time. They're just tensed up. They're not doing that as much anymore. Uh, they're much more relaxed. Their back's more relaxed. Um, and they're not just tucking their tails uh, like they were before. And, and jumping every time I like when just turned around like this. Normally they would have been jumping when I did it before. So we uh, reconfigured the round pin, and I've got two 10 by 10 set up here, and so that gives me. So I kind of separate them a little bit more. I separate them as well, and so um, you know they can't get away from me doing that. And so I've had this for a day or so. So uh, I'm going to put uh, Mike in the corner here and put a halter on him, and. Uh, on Facebook, Samantha said I needed to name him instead of 9423. Said that was part of the problem. <laughs> so I named him Mike. So I hope you're happy. All right. So this is Mike now. All right. So we're going to put a halter on Mike and uh, just kind of mess with him a little bit. Maybe just get him used to the feel of the halter. Um, I'm not going to put a come along hitch on him yet, uh, but that's going to come here pretty quick. But we're just going to put a halter on him, get him used to the fact that I've got control over his head. I want to keep his front end towards me. I don't want his back end at me because if I can keep his front end towards me, I can control him a lot better. Once that donkey gets turned around and he gets his rear end and, and that uh, the, the strength of that rear end under him, you can't stop him. I mean, even a donkey this this big, when they get to pulling like that, you're not going to get them stopped. So uh, when you're when you're got them on the hauler like that, you got to try to keep your head towards you at all times so that you can control them better. And that's what I'll do. We'll just do it in this small pen, so uh, it shouldn't be should be, you know, fairly uneventful, um, and then maybe once we get him a little more confidence, I may pull him out and and uh, come out here a little bit, and work him a little more. So let's see what we can do with uh, with Mike today. What do you think, buddy? He's not feeling it. So, but anyway, we'll see what happens. Good boy. I'm trying to hold the gate with one foot and the donkey with the other. There we go, buddy. There you go. All right. All right, big bike. All right. Come on out, buddy. Come on. Come on. All right, let's see if we can do a little pressure release here. If I can get him to, we'll give him a little pull. A little pull. You'll take a little step for me. Come on, a little step, buddy. There you go. Good boy. That's what I want. You know, uh, when you're when you're working with a donkey, when the pressure is released, um, you know, when when some folks work with mules and horses, they give them kind of give them a bump, like bump, bump, bump. Um, what I found with the donkeys is when you do that, when you bump them like that, they tend to they tend to um, kind of flinch every time you kind of bump them. So they seem to work a little bit better off of a steady pull, and then I pull as hard as I need to to get them to, to do what I want them to do. So I really wasn't pulling that hard, and he gave me a step there. So let's see here. I'm going to try again. I'm going to pull a little harder. But I'm not, I'm not going to get a tug of war with him because I won't win. So I'm going to pull again. I'm going to back off here. Come on, buddy. He's putting his neck out now. So this may be a good, it may be better to have the come along hitch on him to put that pressure on the nose because uh, he's not getting a lot of, uh, really what we're talking is negative reinforcement right now um, is what I'm looking, is, is the way I'm doing this because uh, there's no positive reinforcement in this. The only positive thing is to me release the pressure, but it's negative reinforcement that if he doesn't move, he gets pulled so or he gets pressure. So pull again here. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. That was good. Give me a step. I like it. 
All right, let's try that again. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna back up a little bit so I can get out of here so he's not. Good boy. That's good. That's good. That's good. You know, when I'm facing him right now, a lot of folks will tell me, you know, you should be facing him when you're pulling on him and uh, you should face away from him. And that's true, I think, to, uh, when, once you get this animal to where he's leading good and I, once he moves out like I want him to, immediately I turn my back to him and I walk with him, walk away from him. But while I'm working with him right now, I face him. And that's because I want to be able to see exactly when he gives me that, that forward movement. If I get my back to him, I can't see that. And so I've had a couple people ask me, hey, you know, why are you facing him while, while you're working him like this on the hauler? And that's why, because I, I want to be able to see him when he moves. Now, once we get a little far, farther progressed, and if I'm crossing an obstacle or something like that, then, I'll, then I will uh, put my back to him. All right, come on, buddy. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. That was a step. Good boy. I need to tighten up your hauler. Can you let me touch you? Can you let me touch you? Oop. Oh, good boy. There you go. That's good, buddy. That's good. That's very good. That's very good. I like it. Yes, sir. I like it. Yeah. I'm going to tighten up this hauler just a tad, okay? Just a scotch. I'm going to drop the rope. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. All right, I'm going to do this real easy here. I kind of gooed this up, didn't I? A little tight there, brother. You're okay. You're okay. There we go. A little tighter there. There we go. Well, that's good, buddy. You're not even freaking out on me. Good job. Good job. That's good. It's a big improvement, folks, right here. Oh, come here. Don't make a liar out of me now. A little bit of movement. I'm going to come back over and rub on you again. Good job. Good job. Rope slack on him. That's so all I'm looking for here is just a little bit of movement. So all I'm, all I'm doing today is I'm putting some pressure on the rope. I'm getting a, getting a foot to move. That's all I'm doing. I'm going to turn him sideways a little bit here. Get a foot to move towards me. Like this. Well, just like that. That's all I'm looking for right now. Move his foot. And really what I'm looking for right now is him not trying to get away from me and bolt away from me to tolerate my presence. Um, and he's doing that well. I've touched him on the uh, left side. I'm going to touch him on, on his right side now, which the way they're left brain, right brain, I mean, it's totally different. So you can, you can work great on one side, but then you've got to work on the other side. So we're going to try that now. See how he does. It's okay, buddy. He's tensing up. You're okay. His neck is so stiff right now. Every muscle is tight. He's just bracing. Yeah, see, see he did better on his left side. Yeah. Come on. There you go. Wow, it's, I'm, I'm, I just barely put pressure on it just then, and he took a step very easily. Let's try that again. Of course, I want to push my luck here. back up for me a little bit here give him a little more room there you go buddy good job the fact that he's he's succumbing to pressure a little bit for me he's moving his feet a little bit giving in to me a little bit he's not panicking he's not trying to climb over top of the corral panel that's a good thing yes sir it is now I'm gonna try to another thing is I don't want to come at him from his nose all right anytime I come at this donkey it's gonna be at his shoulder because that's the least I mean, yes, that's the least threat right at this shoulder. If I come at his rear end, I'm out, of, I'm out of his peripheral vision. It scares him. He thinks I'm trying to get on and do something to him. He can't see me. It makes him nervous. If I come at his nose, he's nervous because he wants to protect his nose. Don't want me to hurt him. Uh, he can still see me when I come at his shoulder, and it's not as threatening. So this is where I'm always going to come, right here, for now anyway. I'm not even going to try to touch his nose. He's going to come right here. The other thing I like to do too is, you know, when donkeys uh, groom each other, they seem to groom right here. If you've ever noticed that before, and so it's a good place to scratch to um, 
to give him that little that little grooming satisfaction, I guess you could say. We'll do that a little bit. He says, okay, that's enough. You know, part of it is too, I mean, we want to, uh, humans want to touch them. We want to we wanna show them affection and let them know it's okay, but I don't think they see it that way. Um, you know, they don't know what I'm doing right now. It may feel, it may feel good to him later, but right now he's, he feels that scratching on me. He's, any second he's expecting me to do something mean to him. So, you know, they, they may not see this right now as, as nice. Um, I think I think he is starting to. Um, he seems a lot more relaxed than he was before, so I think he's starting to see this this touch as something that's um, going to be okay. Uh, but at first, they don't see it that way. But we want him to get to there. I want to be able to touch him everywhere. I want to be able to pick up his feet. I want to be able to touch every part of his body uh, without him. Um, in or tensing up because I mean I think my farrier is going to like me better if I get him to where he pick up his feet. <laughs> Good job buddy. Well it's been about uh, 20 minutes or so maybe 30 minutes and I think that's probably enough for today for him. So I think I'm going to take the hauler off and uh, call it a day for today and then I'll uh, we'll start doing this do it again tomorrow. What do you think Mike? All right, let me get this holler off of you. You're okay. We'll move slow. Good job, buddy. Good job. Good job. Good job. There you go. Whoop, you're okay. I didn't mean to smack you with it. Kind of bumped him with the rope there. I didn't mean to. All right, so I want him, we got to get him used to not leaving when I first drop the halter. So I'm going to drop the halter. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, my hand didn't work. <laughs> We'll get there. I didn't. I mean, I could have held on tighter, but I didn't want to right now. We'll, but we'll get there. I really don't want him running off when I drop that halter because that's a good time to get hurt. You know, when you put them back in the pen, sometimes they can feel the ropes and kick up, and maybe not do it on purpose. Maybe you get kicked or you get stomped. So I'd rather him stand stand still while I back away. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Won't we? What do you think? Look at those lips. You see that? Good boy. Good boy. All right. Good day. That was a good, a good session.